She was a woman, a wife, a mother of six children. She was a propagandist for the Allies. Alle gute die die ihren Paletten waren, die Mädels ja noch die Jungen, die da geschafft haben, die hätten alle gute hier neben Gefiert Grund die Schäs. Mir war zu viel Puff, das war leicht durchstockend. Sie geht, sie muss fort, am ersten Exil, schwätzt sie dann zu ihrer Lützebäuer. Das Tor de Chasse von dem Moment nun wirklich ein Symbol war für die Lützebäuer Unabhängigkeit, aber besonders auch für den Widerstand gegen Nazis. Roosevelt had a weakness for European sovereigns. And the Grand Duchess played all the cards he could use in the interest of the country. In da schenken sie uns den nicht irren. It's a neglected part of history. I think the Grand Duchess's role and her quite extraordinary leadership of her country in a government in exile is a story that has not been told. A land like ours that has never been able to live The happiest country in the world cannot and must not go under. In spring of 1940, the tiny Duchy of Luxembourg was facing its darkest hour. Troops of Hitler's Third Reich were poised to invade. Luxembourg's head of state, Grand Duchess Charlotte, and her family prepared to flee the country. A German invasion was something the Luxembourg government had feared. Now, the nightmare was on their doorstep. My pap was alerted and was given to the Herr Dupont selber. He had telephoned me and he said, that it was safe to come and that the border was clear, so we went forward. Education Minister Nicholas Marg was one of the five Luxembourg ministers now trying to escape the Nazi advance. Also on the road that morning were Foreign Minister Joseph Besch, the government's two socialist members, Victor Bodson and Pierre Crea, and the Prime Minister, Pierre Dupont. All five were now heading west with their families, determined to evade the enemy troops. 